decoy bag, turkey vest full of calls, head net and gloves, jacket and vest. Ready for tomorrow morning's opener of the turkey. Spring turkey season has always been a time of great excitement and anticipation for me. Day one of the turkey season, I'm gonna try and slip into the blind, put one down with my PSE. Opening morning found me setting up a little later than I would have liked. Shortly after getting settled in my Alton Safe blind, a young coyote showed an interest in my decoys. He showed obvious signs of mange, and I considered euthanizing him, but he didn't give me the chance. I let out a couple of yelps and was answered by two toms that I'd been watching in this area for a couple of days. Luckily, they weren't disturbed by the coyote or my late arrival. Crap, that, uh, that would have been a great shot opportunity, but they just wouldn't settle down. Those birds came in right across the, the, right beside the blind here. I thought for sure that they were gonna walk right in and start beating up on the decoys, but they wouldn't settle. These birds have been really twitchy this year, and uh, they walked up to the decoys. I, try, I got to full draw, and just, he started walking away right away. Almost like he spooked, he might have caught me drawing or something, but he just would not settle down. I'm not going to take a shot like that, especially first day. Well, yesterday afternoon about 5.30, it was pouring rain, and uh, I was driving by a bush that I, uh, that I hunt. I have permission to hunt it. I haven't hunted it this year yet, but I did scout it, and I know that there's a lot of activity in there. And here there was two great big toms, just walking around scratching in a field in a pouring rain so um, I'm hoping that uh, you know that they've gone back in there just just off the edge of the field and roosted I have a pretty good idea where they'll be so we're gonna go in there and uh, take the bow in this morning set up there's a big deadfall there uh, where they've cut a tree down on a tractor path and uh, hopefully they'll be right nearby and they'll come into the decoys come on with me and uh, we'll see what we can do Closed captioning in today's episode is brought to you by Canuck. I met up with my son Chris and we decided to try the tag team approach on these two old gobblers. He just got settled in and a coyote started barking. He barked so much that the toms were shock gobbling off the roost. I think they were as annoyed as we were. Thank you. 
think when the coyote finally quit barking, the tom seized the opportunity and made a hasty retreat. Well, those two toms from this morning skirted around behind us and followed the edge of the field back here. We got on the other side of a ridge that's right behind us. We, we moved and got a little closer to them, and we got them back, uh, you know, hyped up again. Started gobbling like crazy. But uh, they're, they're quite a little distance away from us. Sounded like they were coming in, then they, then they stopped. And uh, Chris uh, knows this area really well. He said there's a tractor path that goes through the bush back and forth, and they like to strut up and down that. So uh, he's taking a, a little sneak up to the top of the hill here, look down and see if he can see them in the, coming out to the opening uh, at the end of the tractor path. Worst comes to worst, you know, if, if they're not gonna come to where you are, you gotta go to them. So we'll take the fight to them if that's what we need to do. Stick with us and we'll see if we can get them in there. The next day slips by in an old familiar spot with threatening skies and no sign of the two big toms that ruled that area just a couple of days before. Morning number four was a whole different story. This portion of today's episode is brought to you by Bergera. Our barrels make the difference. Well, <laughs> another nice bird. Man, that happened quick. He gobbled off the roost a few times. I, I made contact with him. I like, to, I like to get on a slate and just do some real soft tree calls and uh, just get some thinking in your direction. 
when they fly down. So uh, I used my uh, gobble stocker ceramic with an acrylic striker this morning. It's the only true pot call that the true uh, waterproof pot call. This thing is fantastic. It saved my bacon in rain lots of times. Uh, you can pour a puddle of water. When I do a, a public speaking and, and talk about turkey calling and stuff, I, I'll pour a puddle of water out of a water bottle on this thing and uh, and make it work right in the puddle. Put the striker right in the puddle and it'll work. So it's fantastic for that. Um, it saved me again, like I say. Uh, I would have had to go right to the mouth call. Now, I mean, you can, but I like to hold that pot and striker call up over my head and, um, and do uh, some... Uh, nice soft yelps and, and clucks. And I find that uh, it's, it sounds like they're up in the tree. It kind of projects it up into the air a little bit. That bird knows if he's, if the bird, if that hen that he's hearing is on the ground. So, uh, you know, he'll, uh, he'll be suspicious if it's almost, you know, still dark. I do it after about his third or fourth gobble when he starts up, you know, and he's well awake. And, and uh, I heard a hen over here, uh, as I was saying, so I knew that there was a hen kind of between him and me. So, uh, and, and there was some jakes there. I could hear some real raspy yelps, <laughs> sound like jakes. So, uh, and some half-hearted gobbles. Um, so I figured, well, I better, I better get him moving in my direction. So as soon as he hit the ground, I hammered him good with the mouth call and, and he comes strutting right in. I mean, you saw the result. So uh, I'm gonna notch out my tag. I'm happy to have him. And then I'm going to pick up my PSE bow. Uh, I got a brand new Carbon Air Stealth uh, Mach 1 this year. I'm dying to kill a turkey with that. Um, trying to put a, uh, a Grim Reaper Whitetail Special uh, through it. So we're going to try. Uh, we're going to try that next. Well, one down and one to go. In Ontario, we can purchase two spring turkey tags, so you can bet I was back at it the very next day. Now, right about this time, I was saying to myself, Self, this is a gimme shot. I'll be eating breakfast in an hour. I can smell the bacon cooking. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you saw, this mor yesterday morning was not a great morning for me. <laughs> It was a catastrophe. Uh, I went into a, a huge block of bush that I hunt pretty regularly. I've taken quite a few birds out of there over the years. There was a bird in there and he cooperated to a T. He could not have done any better. Gobbled off the roost, as soon as he hit the ground, established contact with him, and he practically, well, he ran. He ran the whole distance to me. Um, the problem was that uh, when I let the arrow go, <coughs> my uh, bottom cam of my carbon air hit the tripod leg and you saw the result well the ending result was that it completely derailed my bow so uh, I'm out today with my shotgun until I can get a chance to get the bow into the shop have a look at it and uh, see if there's any damage and then retune it, recite it, make sure that everything is good. Uh, I'm going into a bush today that uh, there's usually birds stacked up along the ridge. So uh, hopefully there will be and I can bring you some more action. Stick with me and we'll see what happens here this morning. This portion of today's episode is brought to you by PSE Archery. I established contact with a good gobbler at daybreak, but he was intercepted by a hen, so I decided to wait him out.
Well, that bird, he came from way down the other end of the bush. Heard him gobble first thing this morning, uh, three or four times off the roost, and then he got kind of quiet. I parked myself in a in a nice little cedar grove. I'm sorry I couldn't bring you into the into the hunt a little earlier, but I kind of had to sneak in here. I bumped a hen out of the tree. It just wasn't good. He was way down at the other end of the bush. Called to him pretty feverishly to get him to come in. Never heard a peep out of him for quite a long time, probably a good hour. And then, you know, as so often happens, the hens probably ignored him. And, uh, you know, he figured, well, I know where there's a hen. He could hear me calling. And he come in, you know, and, and it's always nice when you've been sitting here for a while and then you hear that boom, that one gobble off in the distance. And then he's closer, and then he's closer, and then he's closer. I mean, there's there's nothing like that because the, 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 the adrenaline starts to build and you know what's going to happen. And he come in, he jumped the ditch there. Uh, the, that's my friend's, um, I call it the ditch way, where he's widened out his irrigation ditch. Um, <clears throat> down through the bush, and the birds love it. They, they'll either roost along it, or they'll. it's a kind of a focal point for them. So that's the kind of thing you want to look for. You know, uh, land configurations dictate these animals and how their movements are and things like that. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go and have a look at this bird and uh, get my tag notched out and head home. I might have time to go and have a coffee with my wife. <laughs> I don't think he's a jumbo weight, but he sure is a nice tom. Got a beautiful big. Let me put this. This gun is unloaded and, and safe and everything. Get it out of the way so I can show you. Look at the rope on him. Real nice rope on him. Real nice. Those three and a half inch shells. Uh, you know, you get a you get a tight pattern with those tight turkey chokes that they have nowadays and. Uh, it, it can do a lot of damage in a big hurry. It's a very quick and ethical way to harvest an animal, that's for sure. Yeah, nice fan. You saw the way he came in there. He was beautiful. He was aggressive. He was, he was territorial. He wanted that hen and he didn't want that Jake to have him. Nice hooks on him, you know. Real good spurs. I'm going to get out with some friends and see if I can see if I can do something for them. Get a, get a bird with them and uh, get some video so that you folks get to see a little more action. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time for more exciting hunting action on Anthony Dixon's Line of Sight.